Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're right back on Project Ruby and we are working on the firewall, but not working on the firewall. Uh, today we're going to be working on getting the Hydro Boost uh, hole cut and the bracket modified and also uh, get the master cylinder for the clutch. So uh, I've got the Willwood uh, compact master cylinder here. It'll work just fine for the hydraulic clutch. And of course, I've got the Hydro Boost. So we can't use the original location for the old master cylinder or the booster because for one thing, Ruby's firewall now is moved in uh, towards the, uh, the driver's seat a little bit, about two inches, I think. And it had kind of a bubble right here to push that farther forward. So what, to keep the firewall nice and clean, I could put the bubble back in, you know, where it pushed out, or I just modify the brake pedal. And that's the direction we're gonna go in. So let's just go ahead and go over and I'll kind of show you on the bench what I've kind of thinking will work and uh, what I've done so far, and then we'll get in and start uh, modifying that brake clutch pedal bracket that goes underneath the dash, and then we can slowly move forward to getting these installed. Okay, I've got it mocked up here uh, precariously. It could fall over at any second. So uh, we did move the firewall in because the original firewall, this is right off the firewall, we cut off Ruby. This is about where the uh, old firewall or the new firewall is right now. And you can see that was kind of bubbled out, right? So uh, I don't want to do that. If I can help it, I don't want to do that. I'm certainly not going to do it up here, but where we do it for the hydro boost, we may need to do it. So to figure out uh, how to shorten this bracket, because now the firewall is so much closer because we don't have this bubble in it, I made this little uh, alligator looking guy. He's a little eye and his little mouth right there and his tail. So that kind of fits up on here. And it, what it did was uh, I held it up underneath the car and I figured this angle out. And so I transferred it onto here. That gets me where I need to cut this off to get this to fit up underneath the dash. That kind of is our first step. Then uh, once we get that first step done, we can start figuring out where this hydro boost can go. Now there's two holes in this brake pedal, the upper holes for manual brakes, the lower holes for vacuum assist brakes. I think this hole is very, very close to the geometry that this hydro boost needs. I've got, uh, I got tons of notes and drawings, so I have to double check that. Now this hydro boost, if I'm not mistaken, has an inch and a quarter or inch and five sixteenths uh, throw from zero to in. The master cylinder that goes with it has the same throw. So here's neutral. You got my lines right here. I know where neutral is. Now that means that needs to throw in maximum of inch and a quarter. So uh, if I was to put the hydro boost right up against the firewall, which I'd like to do without this kind of a bubble situation, it looks like the pedal will bottom out. So we're going to figure all that out later. Now this linkage has to be lined up perfectly, everything so it doesn't bind and it pushes straight through, you know, to the master cylinder. If you push at an angle, it's just going to wear it out and cause it to fail. So we have to get all that right so the braking uh, is perfect. But the first step is really just getting this bracket up underneath the dash. Then we can start doing some mock, uh, mock up and kind of figuring out what, what we're going to do. Even if we make a fake dash uh, or firewall out of a piece of wood or cardboard so we can kind of put it up there and mock this up to it, that's what we're going to have to do. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and cut this off. I think I just need to cut this off uh, square straight across and so I can hold it up there, make sure this angle's good. And then we can kind of go from there and kind of just figure this out like a puzzle one piece at a time. All right, we got that scribed and cut. Took two cuts to get it uh, perfect. It's perfectly flush up against the firewall now. It will push back when we weld the plate on, but I allowed for that one on my cuts. So I have the pedal in here now and it's, I've got a piece of wire holding it. I got a lot of wire in here holding everything up. So uh, it's in this position it would sit in normally. Uh, and then uh, that gives me the opportunity to, to start taking some measurements, getting a line from the hole to the firewall, uh, from the, the uh, pivot hole right here to the firewall, and then uh, start figuring out exactly where that hydro boost can go. Um, it doesn't look like we're gonna have enough length, so I'm gonna have to do something to the firewall to push that uh, hydro boost a little bit farther away but I haven't taken all my measurements yet. So let me get some measurements and uh, we'll probably get back over to the bench and uh, talk a little bit about that hydro boost. 
Okay, uh, rough measurement from the firewall to the center hole of the brake pedal is five inches. So that puts it right there. Now here is the clevis that goes on the brake pedal that goes to the master cylinder or the booster. So if we put that on there just like that, uh, we do not have, now this piece goes inside, we do not have an inch and a quarter. And that's way too close to bottoming out anyways. Uh, now I can shorten this up and I probably will. So the plan was to cut this off, thread this, uh, thread a jam nut on there, thread this on, and you get a little bit of adjustability, but it still puts us out to about, you know, five and a half inches. So we do need to glean some space. Now, so that means I still feel like this booster needs to go into the engine bay a little bit more. Now, this bracket came with it. Now, this, uh, this whole setup was off a Astro van. Now, that was, it was set up this way, which actually pushed the booster closer to the pedals to the on the interior now uh, and it had a pretty good slope on it as you could tell but what I was thinking is reversing this now Ruby's new firewall is at 76 degrees so what we really need is a 14 degree pie wedge cut out of this um, we got way more than we need here and then we could actually weld this piece right on the face of the firewall and then this piece would slide right inside there the booster would slide right in there it would level out the booster so it's nice and level straight to the pedal and then it would also push us a little bit farther into the engine bay and glean us a little bit more space so my first step really i think i just need to cut this shaft off right here um, the, the, the rest of this we can't use anyway so i think i'm just going to chop that off and then i can start sneaking up on this idea of, you know where it's going to go how it's going to work so let me cut this off and then we'll start moving forward with kind of mocking up uh, one thing here and then we'll mock up underneath the dash and then hopefully uh, we'll make the parts match up when we make all these holes and uh, get it all welded up. I went ahead and cut the bolts and all the extra off of this piece that we're going to try to use to put up to uh, the firewall. So uh, what I'd like to do, it's, it's got a really nice shape and that would be the top right there and then the booster would go through. Uh, I'd like to push this down a little bit around this corner to give me a little bit more space. So to do that, I found a piece of pipe that's the same diameter as this right here. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in the vise and I'm gonna try to hammer that over so we can get a little bit of a lip right there. So uh, let's go with the vise. This stuff is pretty thick, so it's gonna take a big hammer, I think, to get that to bend over. But let's see what we can do. All right, this stuff's pretty thick. This hammer ain't that big, so uh, let's go ahead and whack on it a little bit. And if it's gonna move, great. If not, I can always cut this, slice this pipe open and make a little uh, piece and weld it on here and then cut it, everything to the angle we need. But uh, let's try this first. We'll put a couple of slits in here a little bit of the way down to eat up some of this material. All right, it's starting to look pretty good. Okay, we got that pushed over and gained, you know, I don't know, a half inch. So that's good. And uh, we, what we need to do now is cut this at an angle. So this is gonna go on something like this. This will actually help us uh, angle that a little bit because the firewall is coming down at an angle. So I think we need um, 13 degrees cut. This needs to be at a 13 degree angle. So let me figure that out, figure out how to cut that and we'll get that cut and then we can start uh, doing a little bit of mock-up on the car and see how it's gonna work out. Okay, I got my magnetic uh, angle finder on there and it's just on a one inch ruler, metal ruler, and I got a, a stop over here so it doesn't slide. Got some blocks of wood over here and we're about 14 degrees. And I got the uh, piece up on a piece, that piece of pipe we we're hammering on. So all I'm gonna do is just remove that carefully and mark that line, duplicate the same thing on the other side, and then uh, just take the cutoff wheel and cut that off. So it should work out. I've got it, uh, you know, perpendicular. So if I do this right, it should lay fairly flat on the firewall. Okay, we were shooting for 13 degrees and I got 14 on 14 and a half. So I'm gonna stop right there 
I think we'll probably have to fine tune it later, but uh, I think we're super close right now. A little bit of a gap right here, a uh, little bit on the other side, but all in all, it looks pretty good. I think uh, right now we're at the point where we need to make up some sort of fake mock-up uh, firewall so we can start putting some of the stuff together and see how it's going to fit together and what we need to do from here. Okay, spent about a half hour making a mock-up firewall. So that's a, this is actually a piece off that 50 Chevy, that 3100 of Darren's. That's the piece we replaced. It was all rusted out. So I just took a plasma cutter, cut a hole in it, uh, bent it to 77 degrees, and then welded this piece on here, the little tab, so it won't move and stay at the right angle. Then I put the piece we just made on uh, the booster, and they have kind of a weird square nut that holds it on there. So we've got that all set up. So let me put the camera down. We're gonna go ahead and hold this up there, see how it looks. We may end up just tacking this on there and then we can start holding up the brake pedal assembly once we get some final measurements on that, figure out what we're doing. Then we can kind of hold that up there and see how everything's gonna work. Okay, I got a magnet holding up there. I think I got it this way just about right and centered over the hole. So I'm just gonna put a, a like three tacks on here just across the top. That way we can hang that booster on there and start to get a, at least some sort of feel on how this is gonna work out or not work out. All right, that should hold it. Let's hang that thing on there and see how it looks. Okay, we got it up there and it's looking pretty good. Uh, this way, I believe it's pretty good this way. Now this way, not so much. You can see that bubble right there? This thing's all cattywampus like that. So there's a little lug uh, sticking out inside that piece we just welded on and it goes into a groove onto the booster uh, to lock it or key it in, right? Well, I thought that was exactly lined up with uh, the studs for the master cylinder, but it turns out it's not. So if the worst case, we have to kind of file that off, clock this correctly, mark the spot and weld a little dimple on there and file it and no big deal. That's easy thing to fix. But uh, what I was most concerned about was this direction. So if we take the, and there's really no flat plane here to check with, but if we put it across here, you can see that we're right on. So we're, we're, we've got this dimension or this angle correct, that's for sure. So that's looking good. Okay, I've got a couple of reference lines here. Here's center line and here's the very top of the brake pedal assembly bracket. So I've got it right here, I took it off the car and if we hold it up here, if you guys can see, if I hold it up just right about there, I think that's where it's about gonna go, at the right angle. This leg right here sticks down into this opening which would affect removing this nut to change out the booster in the future. So we need to take this leg right here and we need to flare that out, out to this area right here. So I need to do that. And then we need to come up with some sort of bracket that's gonna come down. Um, so it will basically surround this whole thing. So when this brake pedal bracket uh, bolts onto the firewall, it adds strength to the booster. Cause when you're pushing on the pedal, you're trying to shove that booster you know, out the firewall. So I want to make sure it's all connected, not just connected through thin sheet metal. So let me, uh, let me work on this uh, pedal bracket here a little bit. We'll get this little leg bent out and then uh, kind of, I'll keep fitting it up here and we'll find a piece of steel. Um, I think I got some tin gauge or maybe uh, something a little bit thinner that we can make this bracket out of, which will ultimately be welded on here. And then um, studs will be welded onto the firewall that this bracket will be bolted onto. Okay, let's catch up where I'm at. I did weld a wing on here. I did one on the other side. Uh, they are a little oversized, but the angle right here should be correct. Well, we'll grind it smooth and make it pretty later. But uh, so that's ready to go. And we needed to make that lower because that's where the tabs are gonna be on this plate uh, to slide over the studs that will ultimately be welded onto the firewall. Now I'm going back and forth on whether I need to add a strengthening plate to the firewall and I'm leaning towards the strengthening plate. The firewall is 16 gauge, which is fairly robust, way, way thicker than the 19 gauge that was on there originally, but this design is slightly different. So I think what I'll do is add another piece of 16 gauge plug weld that to the firewall with the studs installed uh, and it'll just strengthen up this area right here. Then that leads us to adding a plate on here 
where uh, the studs will attach. So, uh, but in the meantime, um, I wanted to make sure anything I build does not interfere where, where the steering column passes through, and that's that circle right there. So, uh, so I laid that out on this mock-up firewall, and I did it on the car as well, so I kind of have a good idea where that steering column is going to pass through, make sure I don't put anything in the way. I also went and checked my drawings and my calculations, and the pedal on this car, the lower hole, uh, the ratio comes out to 3.42 to 1. Um, boosted brakes typically want 4 to 1, uh, so we are a little low, but these hydro boost units have a, you know, kind of a habit of uh, being a little touchy if you get the ratio too high. So I think having it a little bit lower will be nice. If there, it is a problem later, we can always pull the pedal out and uh, move the hole and that would be fine. So that's not a big issue. I also uh, checked the stroke on the master cylinder I'll be using and it's 1.10 inches. So as long as we have, let's say an inch and a quarter or better uh, throw on the pedal, we should be fine there as well. So 1.1 uh, uh, inches on the stroke on the master cylinder so that booster is not going to move any farther than the master cylinder will allow it so I think we're good there. The next step is to go ahead and uh, design up that strengthening plate I think for the firewall so we can kind of figure that out and figure out where the studs are going to go and then we can ultimately build this plate right here that will weld over this whole thing have a hole in it for the booster unit and then uh, you know drill some holes where those studs are going to be so I need to kind of mock this up and get it up on this firewall and clamped into place and start taking some measurements and figure out exactly what height that needs to be so the hole in the pedal lines right up with that shaft. So let me uh, figure out how I'm gonna do that and I'll bring you back. All right, don't breathe too hard or that thing's gonna fall. So I just kind of have it propped up on the pedal. The rod is right at the hole, maybe just a little low, which when you step on the pedal, it should rise up. So that's gonna work out. That should be just about neutral on the pedal, according to my marks. So we're looking pretty good all in all. Uh, we're lined up this way, right with the rod, and the pedal is going straight up and down like it should. So I've checked just about everything. Now, I think uh, somehow I need to mark this firewall so I have an idea what the perimeter of this bracket is. That way I can kind of extrapolate that to make the stiffening brace and then go from there. But as you can see, we're clearing uh, where the, where the uh, steering column is going to go through and we're clearing the booster so that nut could be removed and uh, you know, replaced if needed. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and figure out what that stiffening plate, how big it's going to be. I'll take a couple of measurements, figure out where the hole is going to be make a paper template or something and kind of hold it up there. But uh, I think I want to get some sort of chalk lines on this thing without having it fall, uh, just to give me an idea where it sits right now. I think we're pretty good where my lines were. Uh, so we kind of lucked out on that. So let me go ahead and get that done. We'll make a stiffening plate. And then we're going to kind of figure out how that needs to go onto the firewall that's on the car. Okay, I got it all figured out. I got a template made and I don't see any reason to make them different, the strengthening plate that's going on the firewall and then the plate that's going to weld to this bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that paper template off, uh, take a picture of it, transfer it over to Fusion 360 and uh, let the CNC plasma cutter go ahead and cut two of these out for me. Uh, one out of 16 gauge and one out of the same material thickness as this stuff right here, the bracket. So let me bust that out real quick and then uh, we should be getting to a point where we can start figuring out where it goes on the firewall in the car. down one to go. All right let's get the thick one cut.
like that. Nice. Okay, we got both pieces made. This is the 16 gauge to double up the firewall and the other piece is already up and I've got it leveled and a bunch of magnets on it holding it. Hopefully it doesn't move, but I got it leveled out and it is looking pretty good, just like I kind of thought it would. So it's, that's nice that it's working out. Next step is to get it tacked just up here, get some of the magnets out of the way, uh, make sure it's sitting flush and then tack it on each side and that's it. Um, we may have to break it loose and move it, I'm not sure. But the plan is uh, get this on there, then get this whole piece back in the car and help th have this piece show me where to make this hole. So, and then we can mark that out. I don't think I have a hole saw that big uh, for cutting steel, but we do have plasma cutter. So, and uh, this will not be seen, obviously. We're gonna weld this other piece over the top. And I, ideally, I would like to weld this brace uh, to the other one on the whole perimeter. That would be nice. And of course, we're gonna plug weld it, and then we're gonna have studs sticking out that'll be welded from the other side, and then uh, small holes drilled in the firewall and plug welded from that side, so it'll be sandwiched in there pretty tight. Let me go ahead and get this tacked, get all this junk out of the way, see if it stays in position, then we'll go back to the car and uh, see how this piece fits. Okay, we are finally getting somewhere. So it didn't fit right off the bat. Uh, the, this plate right here uh, needed to lay down a little bit on that side. So I tacked it on this side, cut the other two welds, and then uh, bent that till it laid flat against the firewall. It set up inside the car perfect. And then I carefully took it out and then tacked those other sides. So it's, it's where it belongs. It's looking good. It's clearing my uh, hole for the steering column. And the steering columns do run at a slight angle in these cars. They point out towards the gearbox. It's centered up in the seat, but it points off to the right a little bit. But uh, it is looking good. We have a little bit of a gap over here, uh, you know, where I had to pull that away, but there's nothing I can't weld in. It's no big deal. So uh, the next step, once I fine tune, make sure this is perfect, I'm going to mark where that hole is, and I'm going to mark the four mounting holes for the studs. And then what we can do is we can actually take the firewall off, take the plasma cutter, cut that hole, drill those other holes out, and then that will help us locate this piece right here. We have to cut some studs, weld the studs in those, and get that prepped, drill some holes in it for plug welding, and then uh, it will be permanently welded to the firewall with the studs sticking this way, and there will be some holes in the firewall so I can weld the back side of those studs as well. So they'll be welded to that, and then uh, I'll weld it from the other side. So let me, uh, let me spend a few minutes making sure this is perfect, perfect before I mark it. And then uh, we'll get that firewall off there and I'll look for a hole saw that big. I'm almost positive I don't have one. If I do, I'll go ahead and drill it out. If not, we'll use the plasma hole, hole saw. Okay guys, I use a plasma cutter to cut that hole. And then I stayed just inside the line. And then what I did, I clamped this piece right in the perfect spot and I used the burr tool to sneak up on it. And I left just a little bit of a lip because remember, I want to kind of tack that on there or weld that on there. I don't know if I want to full weld it. It may warp the panel, but uh, that worked out pretty good. So uh, that's, that's good. I've got the holes drilled and everything, at least small pilot holes drilled. So this piece is about ready to uh, have some studs put into it. And I think we'll reuse the old studs. Might as well. They're in great shape. They're going to be considerably shorter because all it has to do is go from this piece uh, through this piece and then have the other one slide on it, get a nut and a washer. So that's not that big a deal. So I think that's probably our next step. Um, I'd also like to see, I'm going to do some experimenting to see if I can spot weld. My spot welder will actually spot weld two pieces of 16 gauge together. I don't know if it'll do it, but I'll find some scrap and do some testing. But I think all that's going to have to wait till tomorrow because it's getting uh, dark and I'm getting hungry. So I've been messing with this all day. I think uh, we'll pick it up in the morning. All right, good morning. So I went ahead and did some testing this morning, first thing, and turns out you push that spot welder pretty hard, three seconds, and it really spot welds these things together. I did some destructive testing and it does not want to come apart. So that's gonna be nice. I can uh, reach around and spot weld this brace piece onto here and instead of plug welding, it'll be a lot cleaner. And then all I have to do is grind the spot weld smooth on the other side. So I've cut the studs and they're ready to go. And I went ahead and bolted the plate. This is the plate the studs will go to. I went ahead and bolted it up just to hold it flat and uh, help me keep these aligned. 
and then I just got a nut on there. So let's go over to the welding bench, get these welded on, and then uh, we can start uh, thinking about getting this piece attached to the firewall permanently. Okay, I got uh, this just on a piece of wood and another piece of wood holding that stud with the nut holding it straight. So hopefully this is gonna work out. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and grind these flat and we'll see about getting this tacked up to the firewall. All right, we got it clamped up there. I think it's right on my mark. So let's go ahead and get this thing tacked up. Okay. It's on there, and now we need to plug weld on the back side here, and then uh, weld this a little bit, and we'll be done with this portion. Okay, we got the firewall back up there. Let's see how this fits on. Ooh, look at that, right on up. It's sitting nice and flat. That looks good, I'm really happy with that. It feels pretty solid, even though this is just held in with Clecos. So we got a good distance. This piece actually does have slotted holes at this end and so it can adjust in and out. So when we do the final weld up on the firewall, if it comes in a little bit or goes out a little bit, that's fine. Uh, I have plenty of adjustment left. So uh, the next thing to do, I guess, would be to cut that piece off the mock-up firewall and move it over to this one and uh, get that positioned and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this on uh, so it's in the right spot and then we're going to bring that over and then kind of somehow hold that up there and figure out the exact spot. We'll probably put the pedal back in and we'll kind of reproduce what we did over on the mock-up firewall. So let me get all this bolted up nice and tight so everything's where it's supposed to be and then we'll get started on that part. All right, got that off the mock-up, got it cleaned up and I think I've got it in the right spot here. I've double checked my work so I'm just going to take the MIG welder and put a tack right there, get all the magnets out of the way, and then just double check to make sure it's you know straight this way and the angle straight up and down that way. And then, uh, then probably put a couple more tacks in it, pull the firewall off, and then get the TIG welder out and try to see if we can't TIG weld that in. All right, we got that uh, tacked up. I went ahead and put the booster on. That's just finger tight in there and it's looking really good. I've got it square to the firewall this way. Took a little while to get that. And then it, it, the booster is just a tiny bit up. It's just a, like a half a degree up. So uh, with the rake of the car, that should flatten out the master cylinder, so we should be good. Uh, but we do have a gap right here, pretty good gap. And we have a pretty good gap over here too. And frankly, I think that's beyond my TIG welding skills. I'm not saying that I can't weld it in with a TIG welder, but I, I'm, I have a feeling I'd spend too much time and build too much heat, and I'm worried about distortion. I can do it with a MIG welder in my sleep. That's no big deal. I can hit it and then move on and move on just like we would do a, you know, a patch panel. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, take it off uh, the firewall off the car and uh, lay it down on the bench. Hopefully I can uh, put a piece of steel underneath it, something as a heat sink, and then we can go ahead and get that welded in. We'll get it ground up and it should look really nice once we're all done. So let me go ahead and kind of get all this off and uh, figure out a game plan to get that welded up. Okay, I got up on the table. Uh, the studs are sticking down so I can't lay it flat. So I've got some one inch square tubing underneath here with a couple of clamps with some eight, uh, I think that's eighth inch, 10 gauge laying on top, just to hold it flat so it doesn't bow while I'm welding. Last thing I wanna do is be putting heat in and have the whole thing moving on me. So uh, this should work out pretty good. It's gonna take a while. I got some big gaps. I wanna control heat. So uh, this is gonna just, I'm gonna zip through it on video. And then uh, when we're done, we'll take a look at it. We have a lot of grinding and uh, finish work to do, but let's get to it.
Okay. Well, how flat it is, but it's welded. Okay, all done grinding, finishing, it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of undercutting. Uh, I didn't want to put too much heat on it, have it flow out, and I'm certainly not gonna grind it till it's all gone. This is still 16 gauge, even though we've doubled it up. But a uh, little bit of filling right there, no problem later on. Um, but it looks really good, I'm really happy. Not sticking out too far, you know, it's, uh, I think it looks really good. Uh, of course, the master cylinder will be there and everything else underneath the hood, but uh, I think it's looking really nice. I've got it in there pretty tight. Um, I did push it. I had to do a little filling right here. I had a few pinholes that I hit and a little bad spot, and I wasn't patient because I was working in the same area, and I did warp it a little bit here. I had to hammer it out. Now it takes a little bit more force to hold it in position, but uh, when we weld this on, I think it's going to move a little bit too, but I think it looks great. Uh, glad to get this done. Let's look underneath uh, the dash and see how that looks, and then uh, we can about wrap this one up. All right, got everything up in here nice and tight. I got nuts on everything, they're all tight and it feels really solid. And when I tighten them up, it didn't pull or anything like anything was warped. So it's, uh, it seems like it's sitting right where it wants to be, like I wasn't trying to force it. And you can see I've got both the brake and clutch pedal in here and uh, they're sitting nice and level, looking good. And if you look right there, you can see the shaft is right in line with the brake pedal arm. So we're looking good there. I won't be able to do the clevis and thread that rod today. Um, I need a tap and die uh, to do that in metric and I do not have a metric tap and die set. But all in all, I think it's looking really good. Everything's lining up and it's feeling really good. So i uh, pretty stoked to get this done. It took a lot of thinking to figure this one out. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video and getting the Hydro Boost mounted on the firewall. Now I know I said we were going to get the clutch master cylinder put on today, but I can feel this video has gotten kind of long. So we're going to wrap it up right here. Really happy the way it all came out. Took a lot of thinking, a lot of stepping backs, head scratching, and really making sure I do this right because I can't really test it right now. You can't really uh, push the plunger in on these Hydro Boost unless they're charged with fluid, otherwise it screws them up from what I understand. So um, I can't even attach it to the pedal and give it a couple of pumps just to see how it feels. So we're gonna have to wait till much later, see if I got this right or not. Now the, the, the hydraulic clutch is gonna go right next to it right here and um, it should fit in. This thing is tiny. This is where the firewall is on this thing. So it's not very big at all um, and it should fit in there nicely. We'll do that on a quick video another time, but that's about it for today. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.